Okay, if I could uh, encourage those who are leaving the public gallery to do so as quickly but also as quietly as possible as we resume business. And the next item of business is a Members Business Debate on Motion 13505 in the name of Jamie Green on West Coast Ferry Disruption and Replacement. Uh, the debate will be concluded without any questions being put, but I'd encourage members wishing to participate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I invite uh, Jamie Green to open the debate around seven minutes, Mr Green. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and please do leave quietly because my voice is going, so I don't want to have to shout uh, this afternoon. Can I thank members who signed my motion to allow this debate to happen? Because in seven days' time, this Parliament will rise for summer recess, and our ability to publicly hold ministers to account is vastly diminished until September. Yet, for our constituents, life goes on, and for the next two months, it will be peak season for Scottish tourism and peak season for Scotland's island communities. So I make absolutely no apologies whatsoever for using our final members' business debate to discuss the issue of ferries. Because whilst we on the mainland will go about our summer business complaining about traffic jams, our islanders would be grateful for the luxury of slow-moving contraflows. We can never underestimate the disruption that comes with cancelled ferries. Which is why I and so many others have relentlessly campaigned on this in this parliament for many, many years. I've asked 115 questions on ferries since I was first elected. I've made 180 contributions in the chamber or in committee on this ferry subject. And it is astonishing that nearly a decade on, many of the problems that we debated back then are still not resolved, but in many ways are even worse. Starting also, none of this is the fault of islanders themselves, beleaguered and long since lost trust in government to fix their ferry services. And I should say none of this is the fault of CalMAC staff either, because they are often at the fabric of the communities that they sail between and the communities they serve day in, day out. And the RMT were absolutely right in their submission. Abuse of staff on any scale is simply unacceptable, because our ports and the communities around them are the beating hearts of the islands that they serve. Tourists come and go, residents commute to and from, goods, cattle and produce is exported and imported. And CalMAC itself, as a ferry operator, has been dealt the hand it has in this awful game of maritime Jenga. Why? Because they have an ever-aging fleet, slow replacement of new vessels, an exploding maintenance bill, stiflingly prescriptive routes, and a lack of investment in our port infrastructure. As far back as 2016, when I joined the Rural Economy Committee, as it was then, we as a committee blew up the very notion that the status quo back then was delivering value for money or reliable services. And this unholy triangle that was created between CalMAC, CMAL and Transport Scotland and the intertwining lines of responsibility between them and ministers simply laid bare the reality that Scotland's lifeline ferry services were being governed by the most complicated and unproductive quagmire quango in Scottish public body history. Now, ministers at the time, they vaguely accepted that damning indictment. Ministers at the time vaguely promised they would fix these problems. In fact, so much so, they brought forward the ironically named Islands Bill. The Islands Bill that was supposed to put at the very centre of public policy the needs of our island communities. Well, for the last eight years, let me tell you, island islanders have not just lost faith in their local politicians, they've lost faith in the entire political system. As the old ditty says, no man is an island. Well, you are if you're stuck on iron, your ferry's been cancelled. Because here we are, mid-2024, and here's the reality. In 2017, the annual uh, vessel maintenance bill was £20 million that year. Last year, it was over £42 million. In 2017, £58,000 was paid out in compensation to passengers. Fair enough. And the last year, that figure topped, wait for it, half a million pounds, a tenfold increase. And over that same period, 6,000 sailings, 6,000 sailings have been cancelled for technical reasons alone. Nothing to do with our notoriously fickle Scottish weather. Our islanders don't expect much. They don't expect miracles on high seas and high winds. They just want things to work when they're supposed to. That is not too much to ask, surely. Of course, these two new flagship ferries, which we're desperately waiting on, which should have cost £100 million on an apparently fixed-price contract, are now sitting at nearly four times that in cost. And after you've written off the loans and the fat cat payoffs and the consultancy fees, 
you might be hitting nearly a half a billion pounds in costs for just two ferries. I think you could have got 10 small ferries for the same price, to be honest. And I have to say, for a government which is permanently pleading poverty of the public purse, perhaps they might reflect on that. And what about the contract uh, which governs? Uh, if I get some time back, happily so. Jamie Hawker Johnson. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to Jamie Green for taking the intervention. Does he recognise that, as well as the issues with CalMac, there are ferry fleets right across Scotland, including a lot of internal ferries in, like in Orkney and Shetland? There is a ticking time bomb of ferry replacement needs, uh, and it's going to cost billions to replace more. Jamie Green. Well, as I said, the maintenance bill is on the increase. There are ferries which are scooting about our waters, which are older than me, and that's saying something, presiding officer. Uh, what about the contracts that, that, that operate these services themselves? Well, let's look at the West Coast Ferry contract. That contract was due for renewal in September this year. Now it won't be renewed until perhaps September or next year, although it seems to be endlessly delayed. And it seems to be endlessly delayed under the smokescreen of what I think is nearly a decade-year-old uh, argument over the state aid rules or whether they can direct award or not. Yet still we have no decision, still we have no clarification. Now personally I now do not have a view on the direct award. I used to because I always thought that a competitive public procurement exercise would deliver value for money. It would bring out the best in the incumbent. But the last time CalMAC was awarded that contract, it made 350 specific improvement commitments to our island communities. That was admirable. But that, then I learned Transport Scotland did not even track progress on any of those. And so many of them are yet to be delivered and probably not at the fault of CalMAC either. So I would say this to the Minister, before we hand this next contract to them on a plate, let's be realistic about what they can actually deliver with that ever-aging fleet and crumbling ports. And we wonder why their chief executive left. You know, it's like becoming the boss of a new airline, only to discover that the airplane manufacturer can't deliver you new aircraft, the maintenance workers can't source any parts, the airports can't look after the runways, and it is the government that forces upon you the routes and the prices. It's a recipe for disaster in any other sector. Private operators, such as Western Ferries, yet yeah, they can deliver reliable and cost-effective routes, for example, to Dunoon, at no cost to the public purse. But we can't get a reliable service to Cumbria, which is a journey so short enough that even I could swim it on a good day, maybe. And we expect our islanders to say, ah, oh, well, it is what it is. That is island life. Make no bones about it. Our islands are suffering. Passenger numbers on the Adrosan to Arran route have plummeted by 150,000 journeys in three years. North Ayrshire Council tell her that it is costing business £170,000 a day in lost revenue when there are ferry problems. And one business has reported nearly half a million pounds. That's one business on one island just in lost revenue when there are ferry problems. Our islands are open for business, let me be clear, because backbenchers will accuse many of us of scaremongering by simply stating the reality of these facts. But the financial and social cost of these disruptions is very, very real. Presiding officer, we've had seven transport ministers since I first took oath in this parliament. We've had three first ministers. We've had countless damning reports and audits of the endless and very public failures. Lots of words, lots of apologies, but not enough listening. And that is this government's failure to deliver a robust and reliable and a long-term plan for islands is by far the single biggest failure of duty towards our islands. And I take no pleasure in saying that. And I make no apologies for once again bringing it to this chamber, presiding officer. Thank you, Mr Green. We now move to the open debate. I call first Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Katie Clark. Around four minutes, Mr Gibson. Thank you, presiding officer. And I congratulate Jamie Green on securing this debating time. There are, and I quote, Parts of the media and the opposition parties who can't find a good word to say about ferries in order to attack the government before loudly proclaiming how awful it is that confidence in the service is being lost and that island communities are suffering as a result. Close quote. That's from Tyree-based columnist Rhoda Meek in the recent article calling attention to how those who relentlessly attack the Scottish Government and Calmac or ferries then express surprise that the confidence of potential island visitors is being lost and island businesses damaged. As an MSP representing island communities in Arne and Cumbria, I have hardly been shy about criticising CalMAC or the Scottish Government or Transport Scotland when appropriate. However, this obviously party political motion submitted a fortnight after the Prime Minister called an election fools no one. For the avoidance of doubt, we should not pretend there aren't issues with our ferry network. We need more, a more island-centred island-based perspective on these issues. And we also need to acknowledge the hard work and commitment of CalMAC staff 
operating in difficult circumstances and the incredible work that they do on behalf of passengers, whether they are islanders or visitors to those islands. And this is where I come back to opposition parties in today's motion. Uh, I know Mr Green complained last week about no SNP MSP signing it, but this is laughable given Tory MPs have a policy of refusing to support SNP members' motions. Mr Green's motion introduces absolutely nothing new, even referring to having this discussion ahead of the busy summer season. We are already in the busy summer season. The unencumbered economies are heavily reliant on tourism. Any politician who today proclaims chaos and disarray in the network does so with the clear knowledge they are undermining the confidence of visitors on which those economies rely. So it should be a very good reason for doing so. The motion raises the MV, MV Caledonian Isles being out of action until August and delays to the Glen Sanex delivery. This has been known about for months. The motion raises the damage to the Irish Bertha at Drossen Harbour. Not only was that announced in February, but the wording implicitly accepts the ridiculous notion put forward by Peel Ports that it was overused by Calmac vessels as opposed to their own failure to adequately maintain the harbour that was responsible for the closure. To quote Calmac's then CEO Robin, Robbie Drummond, it's a berth, that's what it's for. I appreciate that Mr Green may not be on top of stakeholder opinion, but why bring a debate to bring up long-standing fair issues during the summer season? The motion's call for Sir Drossen to remain the Prince of Port for, a draw, for Aaron helps guide us towards a motivation other than perceived political advantage, because we were set for a decision on the future of a Drossen Harbour two weeks ago. By calling a snap election, Mr Green's party ensured an announcement was blocked thanks to the PURDA rules imposed on Scottish Government announcements. announcements. Deliberations took place the very day Mr Green circulated his motion. Presiding officer, there are serious issues. If I can get the time back, I am more than happy to take an intervention. Jamie Green. Thank you. There are two reasons why I am bringing this motion for debate in this Parliament. One, because the Government has not and second, because Mr Gibson does not have the backbone to. Kenneth That's Gibson. That is absolutely pitiful. I was raising issues. Uh, uh, which, uh, against, uh, uh, on, uh, as necessary, my own government, uh, uh, when uh, uh, long before you were even elected as a list member. When were you even last? To uh, the uh, chair, when were you Mr. Last Gibson, in Cunningham North, presiding officer. The fleet indeed uh, has issues and, and is aged and lacks resilience. Community involvement and engagement is at an all-time low. Aaron has borne the brunt of the latest round of disruption, while Cumbria has had to endure a series of technical faults with vessels serving on the Millport Lags route. A decision on small vessel replacement programme can't come quickly enough. But sadly, today's debate has nothing to do with a desire to solve any of these issues. It's about a press release from Mr Green and attacking the Scottish Government and Calmac. The Tories have been opportunistic on this for years. The first four Holyrood manifestos that only mentioned ferries on two of those, one calling for a budget cut for ferries. And if you look at what's happening with the Aaron Power, they should maybe think about the, uh, the RV uh, Sisolian 3, which has been waiting for a replacement uh, for many years. 1977 it was built, eight years before, uh, older than any Scottish ferry, but the Tories are refusing to replace that in one of their own uh, constituencies. So, presiding officer, uh, it's disappointing that this uh, overtly partisan debate has been brought to the chamber, but we will certainly uh, do our best those of us who represent island communities, those who visit our island communities regularly and speak to stakeholders, we will certainly do our best, very best, for our constituents, whereas this motion is politics at its base and most cynical level, and I feel I have little choice but to call it out as such. Okay, I now call Katie Clark to be followed by Graham Simpson around uh, four minutes. I congratulate Jamie Green on securing this debate and was pleased to sign the motion to give cross-party support to enable the debate to take place. I believe that our constituents think it is appropriate that we debate these issues before the summer recess. I am also a West Scotland List MSP. I was previously the MP for North Ayrshire and Arran between 2005 and 2015, and I currently work out of a regional office in Adrossan, just a few hundred yards from the Adrossan ferry port. I therefore have represented the islands of both Cumbria and Arran over a number of years, and like others in this chamber, receive regular representations about the ferry service. And it's clear that the problems on the ferry routes have increased significantly over recent years, with a massive impact 
on the lives of islanders, the island economies and indeed island tourism. Scottish Labour research found that the number of non-weather related cancellations trebled in just five years by 237 per cent and CalMAC cancelled 1,301 sailings in 2022, an increase of 44 per cent since 2018. So there is no doubt about the scale of the problem and indeed between 2015 and 2023, 6,302 sailings were specifically cancelled for technical reasons. The average age of the 37 vessels leased to CalMAC is currently 24 years. It should be a matter of consensus across this chamber that we face a significant crisis and that we have to find solutions, ideally on a cross-party basis. Last year's Net Zero Energy and Transport Committee reported high levels of dissatisfaction amongst users. And issues cited included missed school hours, disrupted attendance at medical appointments, the inability to care for ill relatives and friends, cancelled holidays, um, and a range of other problems. And all of us have received representations, for example, about bare shelves on the supermarkets in Arran over the festive period and indeed have had representations from constituents outside um, Arran and Cumbria um, about the impact that that's having in relation to people who holiday on the islands. The Arran route, of course, from Adrossan is the busiest route on the network and its future is currently under threat. The Adrossan route has been the main route to Arran for 190 years, as it is the shortest, quickest and most convenient route, and transport and infrastructure has developed around it. Therefore, there is strong support for maintaining Adrossan as the main port on Arran, um, but the poor condition of the port and the Irish berth in particular is already causing significant problems with Peel Port's closure of the port, meaning the MV Alfred can only operate from Troon, leaving the 40-year-old MV Arran serving the route from Adrossan. On the large Cumbria route also, the normal vessel, the MV Lokshira, has been out of service since April with a succession of vessels serving the route. And construction won't start on a replacement vessel for that route until 2026. I hope that the Glen Sanex will come into service soon. Um, because that clearly will have a massive impact. However, crewing levels and cabin space have still not been agreed with the relevant trade unions, and the RMT union are raising concerns. Given all the other problems that we've had in relation to these issues, I would urge the Cabinet Secretary to ensure that this is addressed and that there is an agreement on staffing levels as a matter of urgency. Scottish Labour supports the award of a direct award and a long-term certainty for islanders and indeed the workforce. We would urge that due diligence includes trade unions and the RMT to deliver a long-term contract to CalMAC. Tendering will not take place within a 12-month framework that the extension provides. We need certainty so we can focus on the service the islanders receive to ensure that we have a robust, reliable service for the future, hopefully operated in a way that genuinely meets the cross-up party support that we need for services of this nature. Thank you, Ms Clark. I now call Graeme Simpson to be followed by Ariane Bird. Just around four minutes, Mr Simpson. Thank you very much. And can I also congratulate uh, Jamie Green for securing this debate? Um, his motion is one of the longest I've ever read. <laughs> it would take me nearly three minutes to read out, and I think I need to give Jamie Green uh, a lesson in how to make a point succinctly. But to answer Kenneth Gibson, it's perfectly in order for any member to table motions of this nature, which are of, in his case, in Jamie Green's case, of local interest. But you can also table motions of national interest. Now, Jamie Green raises a number of important points around the reliability of ferries in his patch and the future of Ardrossan as the port for the Arran service. And in terms of reliability, the issue of the age of the Calmac fleet has been well rehearsed. 
um, and the age in, indeed of ferries uh, elsewhere, as uh, Jamie Halcrow Johnson mentioned. Now, goodness knows when we're going to see the two ferries being built at the Ferguson Yard enter service, the complexity of the build and the fact that they have to use LNG as well as diesel has no doubt contributed to delays and cost. And the SNP's green credentials are shattered by the insistence on having a greenhouse gas emitting fuel that has to be shipped in from Europe and then brought up here by road from the south coast. And why ferries which cannot fit into our drossen that were ordered without any agreement in place to make the harbour ready for them is beyond comprehension. I, I, I see no prospect of our drossen being used any time soon. Um, but, you know, um, having listened to Kenneth Gibson, I hope I'm proved wrong. I hope there is uh, some announcement um, after the election. The islanders uh, of Arran and anyone uh, wanting to get there, I, I think I bet get used to going to and from Troon, um, where there has been investment. I think most people uh, understand that. I see Alex Rowley wants to make an intervention, which I'm happy to take. Alec Rowley. I thank you. I'm grateful to Graham Simpson for taking the intervention. Does Mr Simpson also agree that we need to look at every port in terms of moving forward with the ferries to ensure that the infrastructure is in place so that the, the smaller vessels fleet that are going to be electric, uh, we have to ensure the infrastructure is in place, otherwise we're going to keep having these problems. Thank you. Graham Simpson, and give you the time back. Yeah, and I thank uh, Alex Rowley for making the intervention because he's absolutely right. When we do order those small ferries, um, we, you know, we would hope they would be uh, electric. I think that's the plan. Uh, so clearly, uh, the ports have, have to be ready for that. So Alex Rowley is quite correct. So the Cabinet Secretary will, I'm sure, say that we have six ferries on their way. Um, and that is true, and it's to be welcomed. Um, that is the two Ferguson ones and the four being built on time and on budget in, in Turkey. These will provide greater uh, uh, reliance for the uh, Kalmak fleet and we'll get even more when the order for those seven small ferries is placed. There needs to be a decision on that as soon as the general election campaign is over. In fact, I think it should have happened before now. And whoever gets that contract, and of course it could go to more than one yard, needs to be able to build the vessels on time and deliver value for money for islanders. The Ferguson Yard is better placed to build smaller vessels than larger ones, but it does require investment. And the former CEO, David Tideman, was very clear about that before he was sacked for doing his job. We're yet to hear what the so-called performance issues, which the board chairman, formerly of the massively successful Presswick Airport, accused him of. The truth will out one day. Anyway, when I attended the Ferguson summit in Greenock with Kate Forbes and others, we were very clear that a decision on that investment needed to be taken within days. It's now over a month later and nothing has happened. So Ms Forbes and Ms Hislop need to have their ducks in a row and be ready to work with the rest of us on those two key decisions within the next month. Jamie Green is right to raise the issues that he has today. I hope the islanders that he represents and those that he doesn't start to see a better service soon because they've been let down for too long. Thank you. And I call the final speaker in the open debate, Ariane Burgess, around four minutes. Ms Burgess. Thanks, Presiding Officer. I thank my colleagues for raising the ongoing issues with CalMac Ferry Services and Jamie Green for securing the debate. Some of the speeches we've heard in the debate today lay bare the consequences of decades of underinvestment and short-term thinking when it comes to our lifeline ferry networks. Our island communities are not just bustling tourist attractions. They are living, breathing communities whose very existence relies on resilient ferry connections. Every cancelled sailing disrupts lives, missed medical appointments, unstocked shelves, workers unable to reach their jobs. And this summer's capacity reductions are unacceptable. My constituents in the Highlands and Islands know all too well that this crisis has been years in the making. 
The age of our vessels is not just a number. It's a reflection of our commitment to those who rely on these maritime arteries. The MV Isle of Arran is 40 years old, and the Maid of Glencool, one of the vessels operating on the Corran Ferry in my region, the busiest ferry route in Scotland, will celebrate its golden anniversary in just two years. While 48 years of service is a credit to the skill and durability of the Clyde shipyard workers, I'm sure no one in 1976 imagined their vessels still operating in 2024. Yes, I'm happy to take Jimmy the Huckle Johnson. Uh, I'm very grateful to Ariane Burgess for taking the intervention. And uh, really just on that point, which was a very good point about the Maid of Glencoe and the MV Corrin, um, it's not just island communities. Uh, it is areas like Arden, the Merkin Peninsula that's suffering from, from it. And I was there only last weekend and there were people talking about moving out. So I'm really pleased she'd made that point. I am Burgess, I can give you the time back. And I thank you for, that, for, for concurring with that. These uh, ageing vessels frequently break, break down, leading to over 6,000 council sailings since to, uh, 2017 due to technical faults alone. CalMac had to pay out over £450,000 last year in passenger compensation, eight times uh, at the uh, 2017 level. And while these sums are a testament to the resilience of our people, they underscore the pressing need for a fleet that can weather the storms of technical issues and climate change. A fundamental shift is required to build resilience and undo the damage of years of neglect. Our weather is getting stormier, a situation that will worsen as climate change begins to bed in. So we need to build climate adaptation into our island transport planning. Farmers, for example, need a ferry booking system with an alert that lets them know in advance that a ferry isn't sailing. Too often, farmers show up with their livestock only to find that they have to turn around and go home. A simple text notification system the morning of the sailing would reduce stress and waste of time for farmers. It is time for us to chart a course where the resilience of our fleet matches the indomitable spirit of our communities. And the Scottish Greens have consistently called for investment in low carbon ferries and investment in fixed links to future-proof our island transport. We need an accelerated small vessel replacement programme to deliver ferries that meet, meet community needs, not just tourists. Many communities have their own answers for how to resolve this situation, from significant investment in fixed links to more small-scale adjustments like reduced fares and more reserved slots for islanders. They understand the potential of improved ferry connections to boost our island economies, reverse depopulation, and build a resilient, sustainable transport network befitting a thriving island nation. Another summer of disruption must be a wake-up call, but I share the concerns expressed by colleagues and the RMT that this motion ignores the role of workers in delivering lifeline ferry services in the west of Scotland, which have been compromised by the procurement failures of successive governments. The Scottish Greens will work constructively with all parties, CalMac, trade unions and communities, to design the long-term solutions our islanders desperately need. Thank you. I now invite uh, Fiona Hislop to uh, wind up and respond to the debate. Cabinet Secretary, around seven minutes. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Um, I would like to start my response by expressing my thanks to the CAMAC crew and frontline staff for their work in delivering lifeline services across the network. And as the First Minister noted last week, CAMAC is a key part of the maritime fabric of the west coast of Scotland. And I would like to add my personal thanks to MV Isle of Arran's master and crew for their speedy and professional response during the recent incident when a passenger fell overboard as the vessel approached Adrossan. And I would also like to thank Jamie Green for securing this important debate. I agree with both Graeme Simpson and Kenny Gibson that the points raised here have all been well rehearsed, but it does give me an opportunity to share with Parliament as much as I can in current circumstances. Jamie Halko Johnson and Ariana Burgess raised issues on council run ferries, which are not the subject of the motion as it is presented, so I'm going to focus on West Coast ferries. Scottish ministers accept that on a number of routes, including on an Arran, uh, communities are not getting the service and capacity that they deserve. This is why we are focused on improving the way we deliver these services. This includes investment in the new tonnage with six new major vessels due by 2026 and improved community voice through our intent to directly award the next Clyde and Hebrides ferry services contract to CalMac. I fully understand and appreciate how much the Aran community and economy rely on the ferry service. 
We are working hard to make improvements and to address the current challenges. And I very much welcome the input and ongoing work of the Arran Ferry Com Committee in representing the island on ferry issues. However, it is essential to reiterate the message that Arran is open for business, whilst encouraging people to plan and book ahead, including foot passengers, to allow travel on the required sailing, particularly at peak times. I urge people to explore all options that are currently available for travelling to and from Arran, for example, Ardrossan or Troon into Brodick, and also uh, Clun the Clunig uh, to Loch Ranser route. I have been assured by CalMac that the MV Caledonian Isles is expected to return to service in August and that the return to service date will be announced in due course. Meanwhile, to support Aaron and to provide the much needed capacity at this busy time, Scottish Ministers have provided funding for the charter of the MV Alfred, including additional funding to secure extra crew and allow the vessel's full capacity to be used. Although this still means a reduced available passenger and vehicle deck capacity, we continue to look at options to make further improvements. This includes planned work by CalMac to allow MV Alfred to take an increased range of vehicle types, maximising services on the secondary route from Lochranza to Clunig, and work by CMAL, Argyll and Butte Council and other partners to explore possible improvements in around the slipway there to assist vehicle movements. And whilst, whilst the current situation is far from ideal, I hope Mr Green can recognise our efforts to support uh, Aaron's connectivity while MV Caledonia Isles is receiving its extensive repairs. In regard to Adrossan Port, we have been progressing the Adrossan business case and cost to exercise, and I have met with Aaron stakeholders as well as convening a task force meeting where members, including Kenneth Gibson MSP, shared their views on the ferry service and making the case for remaining at Adrossan and for a decision on this to be taken as soon as possible. I would assure colleagues that the business case is substantially complete and Transport Scotland are working with funding partners to finalise this. We do not anticipate an announcement on the project until after the pre-election period. During my visits and meetings with island communities, they made clear to me that they rightly have high expectation of transport services to meet their transport connectivity needs. The most immediate priority is to ensure that we have reliable and resilient ferry fleets, and this is clear in draft, the Draft Islands Connectivity Plan and reflected in the feedback to the recently closed public consultation. And Mr Halker Johnson. Jimmy Halker Johnson. Very grateful to the Minister for taking that intervention. Does she consider that there may be uh, an extension, or is there any consideration of an extension for the MV Alfred, given obviously it's been taken off its normal route in Orkney? Cabinet Secretary. Um, so, in terms of uh, considerations, obviously that those discussions will take place between CalMac and obviously the owners of MV Alfred, and uh, in terms of reflecting on capacity, need, capability, and obviously the return of the Caledonian Isles. Um, I can assure members that the government will take um, all issues very seriously and in reference to MV Alfred and MV Arrow, we have provided that additional resilience and capacity across the network to date. Members will know that the two new vessels, MV Glen Sarex and MV Glen Rosa, have been secured for the Arran community and the new interim CEO of Ferguson Marine updated Parliament on the 31st of May on progress with the vessels. Uh, Katie Clark, very briefly. Katie Clark. Minister be willing to look at the issues being raised by the RMT in relation to crewing levels on the Sanex and indeed the issue on due diligence in relation to the direct award. Cabinet Secretary, I'll give the time back. So I've already answered in, in the Chamber that I regularly meet with the ferry unions and they have direct uh, input in relation to the award. They also have raised the issue in some time back about the, the crewing levels and I know Transport of Scotland are going to make sure that in terms of the preparation um, for the rollout of new ferries that that issue uh, would be addressed. Uh, President Officer, uh, consideration of the business case and procurement approach for the small vessel replacement programme is ongoing. Uh, due to the pre-election guidance, we will not be able to make any announcement on the SVRP before early July. We recognise the importance of this project and will confirm the position as soon as possible, as requested by Mr Simpson. The motion uh, mentioned the new uh, chief's contract. I refer members to the answer to this parliament on the 30th of May. I have agreed to the implementation of an extension of the current contract of up to 12 months to enable the relevant uh, due diligence work and the associated Scottish Government assurance processes to be concluded prior to a final decision being made on the next chief's contract. 
It was clear that this extension period would not be simply business as usual, and Transport Scotland is already working with CalMAC to develop an enhancement and change plan with a consensus on the areas that, we address, that will be addressed during the extension. These include enhanced community voice, improved transparency through performance reporting, strengthened regionalisation and enhanced customer satisfaction. As community engagement will be essential throughout the life of these services, I met with the Ferry Ferries Community Board on the 12th of June to discuss their priorities and Transport Scotland are engaging with the board to explore how their role can be enhanced. President Officer, the current situation is a challenge, as we undoubtedly know. However, it is important that we highlight the six new vessels that will be delivered by 2026 to serve not just Arran but also Isla and the Little Minch and will have an impact uh, across the whole network. I also look forward to seeing the improvements that will be realised through the new, new CHIFS arrangements and the delivery of the Islands Connectivity Plan. I would like to close by re reiterating that we must all get behind our islands and say with a united voice that they are open for business. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30.